Hello students, I hope all of you are fit and fine. Today we are going to continue with the lesson food and digestion. We will be discussing about refuge, water, balanced diet, digestion of food, preparing food and preserving food. So these are all topics we will be studying today. Students, we all know how important the process of digestion is. Without digestion, we won't get enough energy to perform our daily task. So digestion makes it sure that we get enough energy to do whatever work that we do in our day-to-day -day lives. Now, for digestion, there are a couple of things which are very important. And those two things are water and roughage. Students, today we are going to start with these two topics. So to start with the first topic which is roughage. Roughage is the fiber present in our food. It is required for proper functioning of digestive system. It adds bulks to the food. For example, when we have a food which is full of roughage and or fiber, we feel that we whenever we have it, we feel that our stomach is full. Okay, so uh, for example, vegetables or uh, roti or rice, all these things have certain amount of fiber. Okay, and having it, we feel satisfied. Okay, our stomach feels satisfied. So it adds bulk to the food. Then comes water. Water is essential for our body to function properly. Three-fourth of our body weight is water. So no wonder that it is so essential because three-fourth of our body contains water only and it is very much necessary for digestion to run smoothly. Then comes the next topic which is balanced diet. Now what is balanced diet? The right amount of all the nutrients that is carbohydrate, fats, proteins, vitamins and minerals is called as balanced diet. So whatever food we have, if we are getting all the nutrients in sufficient amount like carbohydrate, fat, proteins, vitamins and minerals, then we can call that diet as a balanced diet. What do we mean by diet? Diet means the food that we have. So this is the amount of the various nutrients that we have. So blue color represents fruits and vegetables. So we should have at least 40% of fruit and vegetables. Then the red color over here represents fiber rich carbohydrates. So we should have that up to 25%. Then this green color represents protein like egg, meat. This we should have 25% and 10% should be fats. Okay, fat should not be more than 10%. So whatever food we have, that food should contain only 10% or less than that amount of fats. So if these nutrients we have in, in the given format or in a given amount, then we can say that we are having a balanced diet. Then comes the next topic which is digestion of food. The process of breaking down of food into simpler form is called digestion. Digested food is absorbed by the blood and taken to all the parts of the body. Okay, For example, it starts from a mouth and all the way from esophagus it enters into the stomach. There digestion takes place. Then there is a small intestine and large intestine where further digestion takes place or the absorption uh, takes place. Okay, the process of breaking down of food into simpler form is called digestion. Digested food is absorbed by the blood and taken to all the parts of the body. So how does digestion takes place? The step one consists of digestion which begins as soon as we took uh, the food in our mouth. As soon as we take food in our mouth, it starts. Our teeth bite and chew the food and break it into smaller pieces. As we chew the food, the saliva in our mouth mixes with the food. Saliva is what? It is a digestive liquid secreted by salivary glands. Saliva changes the insoluble starch into soluble sugar. And that's why it is so much necessary. So we should chew food for sufficient amount of time so that it gets soft enough. Then step 2 involves from mouth of the food passes through the food pipe into the stomach 
Our stomach is a hollow muscular bag. The food is churned here. The digestive juices in the stomach break down the proteins into simpler form. Then comes step 3. From the stomach, the food is further pushed into a long coil tube called as small intestine. The inside walls of the small intestine produce a juice that mixes with the food. The liver and the pancreas also pour their juices into small intestine for further digestion. These juices help to completely digest the food. So whatever we have, okay, it is getting digested because of this particular juices secreted by various glands. This digested food is almost like a liquid. The blood vessels present in the wall of the small intestine absorb the digested food and carry it to all the parts of the body because every body part requires the nutrients and these nutrients are supplied by the blood. Then comes the step 4. The undigested food passes into a large intestine. The blood vessels in the wall of the large intestine absorb the extra water because that much water is not necessary henceforth. Okay, so that extra amount of water is being absorbed and recycled into the body. The semi-solid waste is passed out through the anus when we go to toilet. So this is how digestion process takes place. Okay, there are some tips for proper digestion. Which are they? Okay, first one, have your food at fixed hours. Chew your food well before swallowing. Then third tip is eat lot of green vegetables and fruits. Do not overeat because overeat can also cause problems in digestion and drink plenty of water. Okay, so these are the things that we should do for proper digestion. Then comes the next part which is preparing food because whatever food that we have it needs to be prepared properly so that we can digest it in nice way. Well, fruits and certain vegetables can be eaten raw so no preparation is needed simply by washing it is enough. Okay, but we should wash them properly. Okay, so that was what I was saying. We should wash them properly before having them. Okay, so that all the dust and germs or any chemical fertilizers which are being sprayed on the fruits and vegetables are being washed away. Then foods like rice and potatoes are should be boiled so that it can be properly eaten and digested. Then idlis are steamed while puris are fried so different things need a uh, different treatment potatoes brinjal meat is sometimes roasted also okay so with various food items the process of having it also changes okay process of cooking them changes some uh, food needs to be boiled some needs to be fried okay and some can be roasted also cooking makes food soft tasty and easy to digest so cooking is very much necessary it also kills the germs in the food. So that is another advantage of cooking it properly. Okay. There are few things that we should remember. What are they? Do not throw water in which pulses are soaked. It contains very important and essential vitamins. So better use it for cooking. Then do not wash vegetables and fruits after cutting them. Because the essential nutrient gets washed away when you wash it after cutting. Then while boiling, take only required quantity of water so that the water which has been absorbed, the nutrients is not thrown away. Then do not overcook. Okay. Because when you overcook or you roast it too much or frying too much destroys all the nutrients also. So to a certain extent, cooking, roasting and frying are important because it kills the germs. But too much of cooking or too much of roasting and frying can also destroy the nutrients, which is not that good. Okay, so we must remember these things. Then comes the another part of the lesson, which is preserving the food. So how do we preserve the food? The process of treating food in a way that preserves its value for a long time is called preservation. So if uh, the question comes in exam like what is preservation you can write the process of treating food in a way that preserves its value for a long time is called preservation food is valuable and if not preserved it may get spoiled so why to waste food right then cooked and uncooked food can be preserved in different ways because as the process of uh, the preparing food changes 
for example some food need not be cooked while some food needs to be cooked so depending on that preservation ways or methods also changes so how do we preserve food there are vegetables or fruits which we don't process at all we don't cook them so they can be refrigerated by keeping them in refrigerator we can preserve them okay then another method of preserving is boiling the food then you can can them like this one maybe a jam pickling them so for example pickles we generally uh, use this method of preserving the food items then gelling can also be done drying can be done so these are the things by which you can preserve the food well with that we finish all the topics from the lesson there are some questions that you can try out at home like first one dash is the fiber present in our body so this is a fill in the blank okay second dash of our body weight is water so how much is a body weight contains water that you have to answer then third question is roughage adds dash to the food that you have to answer fourth question dash and certain dash are eaten raw fifth question dash makes food soft tasty and easy to digest okay so these are the fill in the blanks then there are some questions you can try out what is balanced diet what do we mean by digestion how can we preserve food what should we remember while cooking food from where does digestion starts so these questions you can try out at home okay students so stay at home stay safe and keep learning next time we will be solving mcqs from the chapter so see you during next time with a new topic until then take care bye bye